How can a relationship not be personal? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good one. <clears throat> Let's start a little bit back from that, because you say, how can relationship not be personal? Well, Life takes care of that, because is it possible that in your freedom do you stop being a father, for instance, or a mother? Do you become less? Do you stop feeling hungry? Do you lose appetite for everything, including food? It could happen, but largely that's not the case. So what life teaches us is that in, in, with, with all of this, uh, this love, this universal love, or universalization of love, and peace and joy, and uh, it is great that we have relatives. It is great that you have a partner. It is great because if you didn't, you may just think, "Yeah, you know, I am not attached to anything." But then you see, okay, but uh, there's your family. Does it stand in the way of your awakening? There is. Uh, we talk before we go to the relationship between intimate partners. Let's just start other forms of relationships also. With your workplace, with your friends, uh, does it make a tremendous difference? In some cases, you may find people who were your friends. They don't feel so comfortable with you. Like they, they're coming less around. That may happen, not necessarily. But with the relationships that you cannot just walk away from, or maybe you tried. Some people feel, you know, like really right now, I'm not tied to anything. They try to step out of their life. It was also told that the great master Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj, as he was coming in fully into his awakening, he felt he had to leave his family, leave his business, and go live in the Himalayas like a sadhu, which he tried until he met one of the same uh, his students to his master. And uh, he said, What are you doing here? He said, I'm, I'm, This is my life now. He said, But this is not what it means. You don't have to leave everything in that way. Leave your attachments to them. Not necessarily have to leave the thing physically. The thing itself is not the problem. It's the attachments. And somehow it brought up uh, a deep understanding within him, and he returned home, he continued to run his little shop and to have his family and do all these things. In fact, it even makes things uh, really authentic. That can you live in life as it is without thinking, oh wow, what I see disturbs me, what I hear disturbs me, what I taste disturbs me, everything disturbs me, because I don't exist, <laughs> or whatever it is. Uh, so. There is something in that. I'm very happy you brought this question, because I think it will be very valuable for a lot of people. Then in what way is it possible that one can have a, a particularly an intimate relationship? And I would say that the relationship you have with your children, with your parents or whatever, with your spouse or whatever, that they are uh, very intimate, and they call up this, which may feel like a challenge for a while. How did Krishna and Radha get on? <laughs> you see, there, there are examples of uh, that love. How did it happen? Well, beautifully, beautifully. But don't work it out here. Somehow within that, within that great field, you will continue in your dynamic expression in life, can have a kind of an ordinary extraordinariness about it. 
you see. And in fact, you will, your relationships will improve because you will not be able to tolerate the things which are not, not true. You get to them more quickly, and you are less willing to stay in a situation where you are just suffering, suffering, and because, but you are so needy, you can't let go. Something is more clear, is more power, more brightness inside you. And the whole thing, if you are in a genuine relationship where you are both growing, no? you'll find that it's a tremendous uh, power there to contribute to each other's growth. They say that the husband becomes the guru of the wife, and the wife is the guru of the husband. Because you are called by the same voice. Something, something develops, and it can be really enriching. There is, a, a, there is a non-duality inside the duality. It's like, the stillness inside the movement. There is the, the oneness inside the manyness, the invisible inside the visible. There is a harmony that cannot be figured out by the intellect of the person, but only in the intellect of the being. Somehow it works. Otherwise, it would mean that as soon as one really wakes up, you vanish, basically, because you know duality offensive. Duality is not offensive. It's not offensive. It's actually you cannot have experience without duality, including the experiencing of awakening. So there is something there. What will happen is that with personal relationships, it's a God design actually, because it's also designed to reach other places that other relationships cannot reach, and to expose your deepest fears and attachments. They will come up. It's not only for that, OK? <laughs> it can feel like it's primarily for that, you know? But it will show, I mean, because you know, if you are by yourself in that kind of way, you can say, well, yeah, you know, nothing challenges this. But in relationships, in that, especially intimate relationships, often trigger in the human being where our hidden dreams are still alive, our projections, our you know, designer relationship fantasies are still alive, our tendency to project or to control is still alive. And it will bring them up to the surface for them to be just like if you have an, an earthquake at the bottom of the ocean, a lot of bubbles come up. They don't go down, they come up, they touch the surface, they pop and disappear. And in the same way, uh, it will happen and can happen, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes we can't cope, you go to the next relationship. But it brings up. Uh, things that, if you are genuinely in search of truth, it will bring those up to the surface. There is something beautiful about love. Uh, there is a peace about love. There is a, a more space for tolerance and for introspecting, because it will provoke those tendencies. Those tendencies may be latent in the person who is just by themselves also. That does not mean that you should go find a relationship to find them. Everything has its season. If you are by yourself, you can't find a partner right now, try and find the gift of being alone. Because when you find a partner, you are going to wish, Oh my God! <laughs> I did have those days when I was really... You see? So learn to value all the different stages that life brings. You see? And, uh, don't try to be perfect in your, in your role, in the sense of the human personal role. Don't try to be perfect. There are no perfect personalities, even amongst the sages. Okay? And uh, you will also experience in life that uh, you can try to do the best you can, and somebody will just hate you, basically. You know? Like Christ said, they hate me for no reason. 
Don't think that being a nice person is going to secure people liking you like this. There is no single being who is ever loved by everyone, including God. Okay? So just be true inside. And you have discovered the for me the most important discovery in the human kingdom. You're discovering your isness. Which is not, uh, which has taken us out of the forest of uh, of confusion and conflict and thisness and thatness and selfishness, and to be identified with that. When we didn't know better, we we were swimming in our mud stream. And now you are again in the in the expansiveness of being. You don't have to scratch your head so much about life. Ramakrishna said something very beautiful. He said, the mind is like a a, a stream, a very shallow stream, with mud very close to the surface. If you wish to drink clean water, scoop lightly. Go too deep, and everything becomes mud. And when we are functioning from the person, Mud is very close to the surface. We are very protective because we feel vulnerable. The state of personhood is easily vulnerable and selfish. As you come back into the uh, the immensity of being, uh, those personal things within yourself, and subsequently in the apparent selves of others, become less irritating for you less of a, uh, a fighting point for you. You are ma- you're back in your globality, you are back in the wider love, you are not perceiving so personally. So back to the question again, where is the place for that uh, intimate relationships? Um, in freedom. Does it mean that we should all uh, leave home and go off as sadhus and live in caves and things like that, or whatever, live by yourself now, because it is just impossible to live with someone. If it is impossible to live with people when you are free, unless it is your parabdha karma, which means that it is just what is designed for your life now. Some people, it is fine to be alone. You don't have to have a partner. You see, If you feel happy on your own, this absolutely nothing wrong with that beautiful if you find that you cannot stick in one place you keep moving about for a while that is how your life will feel i can only recommend that you discover and uh, through the invitation this uh, this vastness within yourself and that that includes it's not exclusive it's all inclusive Includes all of life, but seen from a new perspective. So it is possible, very much, and can be a beautifying and enriching. It can be also an avenue through which greater love and greater understanding, maybe just through the way in which you interact and grow in your relationship, may actually open up your mind and heart to, to the wider field that, that there's a love in you that is capable of embracing the entire universe, in fact. These words are not too big for you when you hear them inside the isness. If you hear them as a person, you think, whoa, that's poor. Of course, from the sense of a person, you may say, you know, it has been written in the scriptures, you know, love your neighbour as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul and your strength, and love your neighbour as your own self is the two greatest commandment it was said in the words of jesus christ and people try you know, i try to love everybody i'm largely successful my neighbor next door <coughs> i can't fit them in and if you love from this personal try to love try to love try to love it is impossible if you're trying to love from your person but if you discover the love that arises and that is inherent in beingness, in the isness, it is not personal. When it is not personal, it flows beautifully. 
Is it possible to have a relationship without attachments? It's challenging. It is challenging. <clears throat> it is even said that a sage once had a son, and somehow he sent his own son to another sage for him to recognize, because of the relationship the son could not appreciate the father as being a sage. Sometimes these things can happen, that your partner may not be in synchronicity with you, you are already more deeply into your own spiritual journey, maybe they are not. That is a challenge you will have to face. If you are not trying to demonstrate your understanding, and you can come from understanding, it is possible to be in relationships where you are very different in your outlook, and you meet in a common ground of, of love. There are relationships right now that I know that are, are, are flowing sometimes even better than people who are in the same together. You see, life it cannot be figured out. You cannot fit it in any mode. It will just every time you think I got it, it will put a custard pie in your face. It will do. So, largely we are talking about the relative, and we are trying to speak as though there's an absolute in the relative. And the life is showing you, no, 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 no. Don't go so tightly into form. Stay in your formlessness. You can use every concept if you don't lock them tight. There must be space that uh, things can change. That things can change. Some people feel that the more tight they hold onto their concepts, the more established and more dependable they can be. That's a falseness. Uh, concepts, uh, they come and go, like the clouds come and go. There are some things that they help you to see much more deeply into the nature of the Self, make use of them, but don't make any tattoos out of any particular teaching. Make use of the teaching, find what it is pointing to, or discard it if it doesn't resonate deep within your heart. Leave it alone. But don't leave anything in spite. Beware of cynicism, and watch the mind, because it is quick to judge, and even to condemn those who appear to be different from you. In your global heart, you can celebrate the differences, knowing that they are just the expressions, and knowing that we are one in essence. You will not be afraid of the sense of other. The sense of other is a an enrichment, a beautifying, another aspect in which the Self manifests. And we grow like this, through anger and pain and laughter, and all of this. And that is the, the compass for the spiritual mind. You will grow in that. So I find no conflict in relationships and so on. In fact, I feel that they stand a greater chance to improve and to grow out of their littleness, to grow into beautiful ways. But if you are trying to grow as a person, you are going to find more challenges. Grow in the beingness. Grow in the isness. But the person, of course, in the dynamic field, there are things that you will have to face in life. And uh, the, the human side, the person side, that 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 energy uh, will keep on. You know, it is very difficult to, to to overcome certain things. But as you keep staying in the in the isness, your interest in them will fade. And if a thing fades in interest for you, it doesn't register in consciousness anymore. And for you, effectively, experientially, it ceases to exist. It's not that the thing in itself fades but your interest in it fades. And the most powerful thing that can happen in you towards the, what I would call the, this, these mind attacks is that the mind becomes, in its psychological expression, becomes insignificant for you. Its voice, its attractions become insignificant for you, because you have found a greater thing, you have found a space of being. So we don't have to try and be perfect, but Honour the truth in your heart. That is already a kind of perfecting.
Thank you. If I may, could you speak some illuminating words upon intimacy and the body-mind? Can there be intimacy without the body-mind? Sex without the body-mind? Can be nicer. <laughs> Why not? Uh, when you all the things, if we put them also in the in the realm of the senses and sensations and so on, when you wake up, do you less enjoy eating? Do you less enjoy uh, the things of, of of life? It can be there, but the obsessions go, the neediness go. Supposing by waking up we all wake up, and basically I met one time in the United States. I think we we're going in the States, and we were brought to, I was introduced to one group, and they were a spiritual group, but they did not believe in, 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 in sex, basically. So, where are they? We don't know. They, they, they gradually faded out. Um, I wonder why, I don't know. I don't know but, uh, so, if the purpose of awakening is to, is basically to stop proliferating in the in the realm of the, the manifest, then that would be the will of God. But uh, I don't want. How will it be? You have a family, uh, you have a child come in, and then you have these things. Oh no, it's bad. It's bad. It's not bad. Everything is fine. The goodness and the badness exist in you. It is in the way in which you perceive. It is not outside. It's easy to say outside. Yeah, go on. We put so much energy to try and change the outsideness, and not learning that it is reflecting on the insideness, and clean your house from inside. As uh, the Lord said Himself, don't keep saying, you know, to people, oh, you know, uh, let me take the dirt from your eye. First, while you yourself as big dirt in your own eye. So remove the dirt from your own eyes, and you'll be seeing clearly enough to see if there's dirt in the other side. And so like this. So it is like that. Um, I find no fault. You see, the point in I say obsessions, neediness will again come from person, and the distortions within personhood give rise to excessive neediness and. You know, uh, addictions and uh, all of these things, which don't beautify. They may intensify the sense of passion, but they don't beautify. They don't lead to genuine happiness. They don't lead. They lead often to abuse and blindly also. So everything comes right in the field of the isness. You honor that, and you see how beautifully it is harmonizing every other aspect or facet of your expression. Is touched and 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 elevated from that central discovery. <laughs>